What's up guys? So this is just gonna be a quick tutorial based off of a shot from one of my last videos I just put out. The Motorcycles Filmmaking and Adventures short film shot on A6600. I know, long title. But if you haven't seen it, uh, here it is up here in the top. You can click on it and watch it first if you'd like to see what the heck we're talking about. But there was this shot in there that I got of me doing a backflip off of a bridge in like hyper slow motion, like barely even moving. And I had a lot of people ask me how I got it and how much they liked it and what I shot it on. So I thought I'd make a quick video on exactly how I did this. So I shot this on a GoPro and I was really amazed by the results I got. But what I did is I shot in 240 frames per second at 1080 because you can't shoot 4K at this high of a frame rate. Now you might be able to get away with doing 2.7 at 120. Then you have a little bit more resolution to work with. But I think this effect works the best when you have the most frames that you possibly can. So normally when you're shooting at 240 frames per second, you could only slow it down to 10% and before you start to get kind of just like clunky, weird looking slow motion. But there's an effect in Premiere called optical flow that you can use actually on any clip in any frame rate to slow down clips and it basically adds in frames that are not even there and you can slow it down to whatever you want. Now because this is kind of like an AI feature, if you're working with footage that has a ton of detail and a lot of like little things and a lot of stuff moving around, it can kind of warp the video and you might have noticed that in a couple spots in my video. I decided that it didn't really bother me so it depends on what kind of project you're doing if it's something you know, kind of trippy and creative and you don't mind that it warps it a little bit uh, versus something that you're turning into a client that needs to be perfect. So it doesn't always work with all footage, but it's worth giving it a try and I'm always pretty amazed at the results that I get. So let's jump into Premiere and I'll show you exactly how I do it. All right, and I'll find my clip here. So sometimes you can notice here in GoPro footage will like come out vertical or upside down or something. Just depends on when you started the video what it thinks its horizon is. So if it does that, all you need to do is go up to your effects controls and rotate it to be the right direction. So I believe negative 90, let's enter that in, is the right size and then I'll upscale it to fit my frame. Now let's just find on the clip where, so see this is in 240, so it's already in slow motion. Everything's moving really slow. So I just wanna scrub forward, find where I start to jump. And this kind of effect helps to have a clip that has a lot of dynamic movement in it. You know, generally with GoPro shots, you know, you're getting a shot of some crazy action. So make sure you have something to work with that's interesting and there's a lot of movement going on. Otherwise, it's not going to look like very much at all. So I'm going to start it here right where I start to jump. So let it play at the normal slow motion that it's already in because when you shoot in 240 on a GoPro, it just automatically puts it into slow motion. And I'm gonna find the point where I wanna slow it down more. So for me, right where my shadow appears right here is where I wanna slow it down a lot more. So how I do this is I just expand this video frame, right click it, go show keyframes, time remapping, and speed, just like you would do on a normal speed ramp. Hit the P on your keyboard to bring up the pen. Zoom in a little bit here. Make a point right there. Hit V to get your pointer back. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the second section of this line all the way down to 5%. Okay? And then I'm gonna widen this a little bit 
just so it kind of smoothly goes down. Make kind of like a little, a little ramp there. And then the key thing to do here is to right click, go to speed and duration, and change this time interpolation from frame sampling to optical flow. This is where the magic happens. Hit OK. And now in order to watch what you just did, you're gonna have to render it. Optical flow is super intensive on your computer. So what I do is I just set an in and out point around where I wanna watch and then render it and then check it out. Once you have it rendered, you can check out what you got so far. And boom, look how beautiful that is. It's like I'm barely even moving. You can just, you're just like freezing time completely. And then right there, I wanna go back up to the normal speed. So I just hit the pen again, hit V to get my pointer back and bring this all the way back up to 100. And keep in mind, 100% is already slowed down in this case because I shot in 240 on the GoPro and it just slows it down already. But you can do this on any clip that you want at any frame rate. It does work better at high frame rates, but you know you can do it actually at 24 frames per second and still get good results sometimes. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty easy. Really all you do is lower it down, change frame sampling to optical flow, and then render it out and do it really low, you know, try it out down to 1% even if you have a lot of motion. 5% I feel like works pretty good with the footage that I've been playing around with, but it's pretty awesome effects you can do with such a small little camera like this that already has slow motion, but just taking that slow motion to the next level. So give it a try. Try it on your 24 frames per second clips as well. If you had a shot that you wish you could slow down, but you didn't shoot it in a higher frame rate, give it a shot. It might work. You know, it, it actually does a pretty good job if there isn't like a lot of moving parts and details going on in your clip. So anyway, that's it for today. And hope you guys enjoyed that. Please subscribe and say what's up down in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.